happy Saturday morning, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Collider Mailbag. I am your host, John Roca, and today I am joined by one of my old friends here who I've seen from Florida to L.A. <laughs> I've directed him on stage, and damn right. if he has not, like, blown up as a Schmodown personality and as a building pundit here oh. in the world of film and television, Mike KO or Killer, whatever the nickname is, whatever this week, is this week. <laughs> How are you, Mike? Oh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, morning man. Thanks I'm for good. having me out here. Of course. I was excited that you could come this on. a delight. <laughs> <laughs> well, as always, we're going to answer uh, your questions you send in. I took, I, you know, got all these questions from you all, pared it down to about 20 to 25, sent them on to Kalinowski. Kalinowski picked five that he liked, and those are the ones we're going to answer. Remember, when we put the call out on social media, on Twitter and on Instagram, look for that call out. Put a, the hashtag Collider Mailbag on your question so I can find it easier and possibly select for the show. And if you hate social media, you can always email us, <laughs> mailbag at collider.com. That's where I find most of the questions because there's like a plethora, a plethora of questions that you all send yeah, plethora. in. Plethora. <laughs> that I love to select. <laughs> and so we picked out five really good ones. Mike, are you ready? I'm ready. All right. It was tough. Yeah, there, was, there, right? there were a lot of really good ones. Yeah. I felt bad. I was like, I don't, I don't want to just do five, but... You gave me the mandate. That's what we, we got to do. We we gotta, that's all we have time for. Let's jump into the first right. one. It is uh, from Michael Pistorius. It's an email. He says, hi, Roca and guest. Do you think that Disney are going to be set up, be setting up the future in the MCU using Far From Home? Also, what do you think will happen to Spider-Man after Far From Home as the Disney slash Sony deal is done after Far From Home? Mike. Right to me here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, let's see. I mean... Yeah, that, 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 you, you saw with the trailer where they gave it, you know, they, they, they said, you know, spoilers, so mm -hmm. now we've got the multiverse. Right. Or supposedly uh, have the yeah. multiverse. Well, it's, it's Mysterio. Uh, so. Yeah, it's Mysterio. If you guys don't know him, it's so, yeah. I don't know what to believe. But seeing this, that is a very, very good way they can introduce X-Men. Mm -hmm. It oh, is yeah. X-Men Fantastic Four, where people said, you know, where do mutants just suddenly appear from? But then... Now you got this coming in, so right. I have no... Any time I've ever tried to guess with the MCU what I thought was going to happen, it, Endgame proved it, I have no idea. Yeah. I have no idea what I'm thinking or what I'm th talking <laughs> about. Uh, I don't know, what about you? What do you think? Well, thoughts? I think if this is an interesting point, because I wonder if this, uh, if the Amy Pascal situation, of her going to Universal will That's affect right. this, because she was very key in, in, in these negotiations with Marvel to have... Uh, Sony lend Spider-Man to Marvel for this use. Now, the idea of the multiverse is interesting because now you can introduce multiple Spider-Men as well, which was introduced, introduced in, into the Spider-Verse. You could have right. Miles Morales now in the MCU or be the main Spider-Man in the Sony universe. You could have Spider-Gwen be in the MCU. Everything's in play. Hell, I love a Spider-Man noir or noir Spider-Man when he's running off with the Guardians of the Galaxy. That's certainly a possibility. Any kind of nuttiness is possible when you open the door to the multiverse, depending on the contract negotiations. You, you make a great point because now you talk about the ultimate universe. Right, the ultimate And are universe. we going to now get a Nick Fury that looks like what the 616 Nick Fury used to look like, right. with, you know, gray temples and the eye patch and the white guy, Yeah. and have him and Sam Jackson meet off? I mean... That, it, 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 the possibility you go, we thought, I mean, we talked about this, we think, you know, okay, at Endgame, Infinity Saga's over with, what's going to happen? But you're just yeah. like, now all the questions, you're like, holy hell, what's going to happen going forward? And what could happen for three more phases? Could we get a Miguel O'Hare Spider-Man for 2099 universe? Yeah, and, which was introduced in uh, right, at the end right, of Spider-Verse. Right, so. Would you ask yourself, Mike, let me ask you, okay. do you think the fans are ready for a multiverse in the film universe? We've seen it in the TV Berlanti universe uh, for many seasons. Do you think the fans are ready in the film-wise? That's in a great point world? because it, it goes to me because I was like, isn't DC the multiverse? Right. It's like, so when did it, Marvel have the multiverse? And I know maybe DC has the infinite Earths. So I'm right. just like, for, even for me as a fan who's been with this forever, it's just like, but I think the fans are smart enough. And I think, I think Feige does such a good job of you don't need to know 30 years of comic books. You right. don't need to, you don't need to. And they, like my girlfriend who's seen a couple of the Marvel films, she crying, weeping, she knew all the right beats mm -hmm. in, in Endgame. So I think Marvel does such a good job of laying it out for people, I guess, that have been with it for so long, mm -hmm. all, all the, you know, the history and this, that, but also the, the people that just love going to see a great movie. Right, do you think so. Spider-Man stays in the MCU? I think so. Okay. But, but, but now again, isn't it Lord Miller doing their Spider Verse, they're handling the Spider, right, the Spider Verse that with stuff. the animated stuff. Yeah, not just live uh, action. Oh yeah, and, I think and live they, action yeah, too. They took, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, 
I don't I know. I wonder because with Universal and Amy Pascal, we'll move on here real quick. Uh, you now have Hulk and Neymar in the mix. Uh, Submariner yeah. in the mix. They could get lent out to Marvel, and then so, so the, maybe we'll see how this all plays out with Spider-Man and Tom Holland. Because there's a lot of That's curious a, questions. Yeah, that they did that little uh, here. Use him for a little bit. Yeah, we still ours. Yeah, and I don't we'll know. see. And we may have to answer this again later on down this mailbag. All right, what's yeah. our Let's go. next question? Number right? two. This will be. I'll give this to you here. Uh, there we go. Pull this up. Okay. It says hello, Collider. Which snap? Who's it from? Who's it from? It is from uh, Ernie Neal. Yeah. Ernie Neal, I hope I'm saying that right. Which snap do you think impacted the world more? Thanos dusting the world or Tony returning everyone who were dusted? This is a fantastic oh. question. And, you know, initially I thought it was that they were equal. But then as I started to think about it more, you get people were obviously, it's almost like the rapture, right? People right. were obviously <laughs> overwhelmed and broken by the loss of so many people randomly. You know, when Ant-Man comes out and he's rolling down the street, you see all these dilapidated houses and cars because no one's taking care of them because only half the universe exists now. And people are just learning to get over it. And some people getting over it easier than others. Obviously, Cap carrying it around because Cap feels responsibility. Right. The heroes feel responsibility. But normal human beings are like, this happened. What a crazy world we live in. I've got to move on eventually, as everyone or most people do when they lose someone in their lives they find a way to move on this is five years later so if the snap brings everybody back after you've moved on found someone else maybe even had a child with someone else and your husband or your wife comes back or your children come back how do you put your life together also who's going to start all the new businesses who's going to pay taxes how are you going to buy food there's all these people coming back so i think tony snap though it was great to bring everybody back who was unfairly dusted it causes an incredible amount of trauma to a world that had already found a way to kind of move on for the most part. Now you're putting through this, through them, through this all over again, this emotional journey all over again. I agree. When, like, I didn't think about it because for me, I'm like, you know, you, we drive in LA, you're sitting in the traffic, it's like, man, Thanos, he was on to something. He was on to something here. Well, but, there's even a line in the movie where they say, like, I was able to see the whales because there isn't as much pollution yeah. in the ocean. Yeah. I, I'm like, he wasn't so. Was it was fair. It was fair. It was. He just did, didn't select people. It wasn't nope. you. You. He's like you. Just whoever. But yeah, you made a good point. It's like five years. These people come back. How? Like the basics of food. Yeah. Like we have not been producing enough food for double the amount of people now. Right. Um. I want to feel. And and this it speaks to what I would think. The betterment of man. I would think that the entire world would come together. This would bring us all together as one world, knowing we all have to work together. But knowing how people are, yes, I think this would turn us off <laughs> in completely different directions. I think this would turn into a purge situation. Oh, I think people yeah. would be like, "You should have been gone. You were gone. Right. You know, I'm going to make you gone." Uh, uh, or I was happy you were gone. Yeah. I was unhappy in this marriage. But just what you said about or the whatever. marriage and, and having yeah. a kid. What, what if your the love of your life was gone? Yeah, and you moved on. You know, and you have to move on. Like, like you know, that that speech with Steve is such a great speech. Oh yeah, I got it. Yeah. You know, it's it's our world, and we have to do it now. And mm -hmm. it's yeah, you got to move on. You yeah. don't want to, but you got to. Yeah. Because you, there is no hope of these people coming back. It's not like, I, I you know, I, he just left one day. And it's like they know we knew the world kind of knew, and I think right. you would think that the, it it got out that something. Like, right. What do you right. think happened? You think the Avengers kind of came out and spread the word through the the, the police that were left, the the government that was left, saying, hey. This is what happened. I think you have to say something. something Maybe not, not the full story, but certainly so, yeah, something happened, and this person did. There is an event. Right. It is not just because it's right. worldwide. I don't um, think Captain would hide things from the people. I don't think he'd allow that to happen. So. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think he'd have to admit it. Yeah, and then you 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 are faced with a yeah. The the the, the honeymoon is there when you yeah. come back, and it's just like yeah, this sure. is wonderful. Everybody's My back. family's back, and now you're like, holy hell, what yeah. do we do now? What is? Uh, it, it's it's a fascinating question. And I think uh, Far From Home has it, it's that is a. That's going to be fun to explore. That's going to be a big one. <laughs> I right. almost feel like the Rooster Brothers going to be, look what we sent you guys. We're out. <laughs> We're See out. you. See you. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Uh, all right, let's move on to our next one. It's uh, from Rob Naylor. Uh, one is on <clears throat> Instagram. He asks, what underrated film of the 70s, 90s era should be remade and by who? I'm choosing Monster Squad by uh, Guillermo del Toro and Flash Gordon by the This Is End crew. This is the end crew, rather. Uh, hashtag Collider Mailbag. Uh, Mike. I love this question. Yeah. This was uh, of those. Um, my God, for my my go to right now is I would love to see a remake, or a reboot, or reimagining of Remo Williams, The Adventure Begins. Yes, Fred Ward. Mm -hmm. I think. I know there, there was talk that uh, Shane Black had it for a little while. Yeah. Uh, I think this movie is so ripe for because it was it's such a cult classic. But yeah. it's, I, I hate rebooting or redoing a movie that's good. Right. I hate that. 
do something that, that wasn't received as well or had the potential to be so good. I love it. You look back at it now, you see Joel Gray and Asian makeup. Yeah, and you're like, little, uh, <laughs> um, but I just love that movie. I think the character of the franchise, it's it's kind of, they try to make a blue collar James Bond out of it. Yeah. Fred but, Ward. Yeah. Of all Fred people. Ward. Oh, so good, Fred Ward. Yeah. I, I, you, you look at it, I, I, I watch John Bernthal uh, right now. I'm like, that's that's Rima Williams oh, right there. That's a great he does look a little bit like Fred Ward. So that kind of sticks with me. But like, great oh, idea. he'd be perfect okay. as, as Rima Williams. Okay. Uh, I'm on board with that. I think that you could get a series. You talk franchise. Everyone wants a franchise yeah. nowadays. That yeah. is a franchise waiting to happen. Certainly possible. I have uh, Rima Williams. I have Rima Williams Did as you? well with Jackie Chan taking the, you, the Joel Gray I part. I see that. Yeah, and possibly Dylan O'Brien from American Assassin. That kid, I like him, but Bernthal, that's a way better choice. I like that because Fred Ward was a little older when he yeah. did this, so it was a little strange to see a guy, I like a blue-collar oh, guy, man. doing this part. I have the perfect weapon that uh, Jeff Speakman did, redoing that with Peter Berg as the director and maybe make it female and get Deborah Ann Wool from the Daredevil series to play the perfect weapon. Certainly, a possibility, or someone, someone who's got some martial artist training that you want to see slide into that situation. I got George Miller redoing Waterworld, possibly Ooh. with a, a new, like redoing, because I think Waterworld has a lot, has a, has a very powerful uh, skeleton to the structure of the movie, <coughs> but everything around it is so cheesy and not fully thought out that it doesn't quite work. I think George Miller, because of his work on Mad Max, could make a post-apocalyptic yeah. thing on the water. Hell, if there's a next you, Mad Max on the water, would be awesome. As I say, you could make that a whole world. Yeah, yeah, a whole separate world. And my last one is They Live. They Redoing They Live would be brilliant because you can explore even more of the sociological and political stuff going on in our world now that we're all way, way more aware of than we used to be. And you can even get real artsy with it and get Denis Villeneuve to take over and do a version of They Live. And I wonder how that would be. Well, first you said the perfect weapon. I just watched that two days ago. Did you really? I I, I put it on. Jeff I didn't Speakman. Know. Oh my God! Are you kidding me? That, that montage at the beginning. He's shirtless with his sweatpants on. Doing to the two. You know, I got the power. Yeah, yeah man. It's phenomenal. <laughs> uh, I, I'm on board with that. Um, yes, yeah, so I love that. Uh, one more. Yeah. It's it's a Disney unknown classic. Okay. Called Condor Man. Oh my God. With Michael Crawford, Phantom of the Opera. Right. I think uh, it, it's tough because it's not a DC and it's not a Marvel property, and it seems like anytime it's it's not one of those two big ones. They struggle with it because it's yeah. it, there's no comic book to it. It was just the story of this guy. He's uh, I think his name's Willie Will, 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 Willie Winkins or sure. Willie Walter, sure. something like that. He's a comic book artist and he creates this thing. And his buddy works for the CIA. And he comes up with this idea. He's like, hey, I need yeah. you to go help me just deliver something. This microfilm in Russia or in Europe, and uh, and he w w while he takes it up, he's like, well, I'm gonna do a Condor Man. And he he right. gets the CIA to fund his comic book, his his uh, suit. He's got the suit that he's got these giant wings. This car that goes in this little it's like a crappy truck and the car drops out and it's you yep. know the the main theme it, it's a uh, oh god who is who was in in gladiator um he died yeah, oliver reed oliver reed yeah he's the bad guy in that. He's the oliver bad reed. Guy. yeah and I, tia carrera's mom who's the actress she's, in wayne's world is that's her act, mom that's her mom that's barbara carrera i think yeah. i think that movie would be perfect it, it, it could do a, like a wink and a nudge at the audience where uh, you know we're at a point now where i think like a movie like mystery men yeah back in the day oh, bombed yeah. because we weren't the comic book had not reached the level it is what now. Right. If you do a Mystery Men now where they were, you know, turning it on its ear, not being a parody, being, you know, truthful, yeah. but just having fun with the genre. I think Condor Man could really do well. Well, you look at Doom <clears throat> Patrol being transferred over into DC yeah. Universe. That does have a comic book basis. Yes. But the spirit of it is very Mystery Men in the approach oh, God, yeah. of the real, of what the reality is of having these superpowers and what they can do. But you get Umbrella Academy is another one that you, you definitely can bring a group together that may have a little bit of a comic book source or doesn't have a comic book source and kind of explores the idea of having right. superpower. So that's certainly something to dance around. What's yeah. our fourth All right, we're going number four here. Yeah. And this comes to from Jake Brosius. I hope I said, am I saying that? Sure, I think Brosius. so. Jake Brosius. Hello, Collider Mailbag. With the drop from this week's Spider-Man Far From Home trailer, it got me thinking about how the mention of the multiverse could play into the Marvel-Sony deal going forward. Could the introduction of multiple Earths lead the way for Sony to have Tom Holland's Spider-Man in their movie universe of while still keeping him the main MCU? It seems the trailer that Spider-Man isn't leaving the MCU anytime soon, but I can't imagine Sony doing their whole universe without him. Would love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, this is something that I'm thinking about more and more because I've been kind of banging the drum that Tom Holland's Spider-Man is going to lead this new adventure. I've been saying it for a little bit under a year, and okay. this last trailer, when they're really stressing on the fact that he's going to replace Iron Man, yeah. made me feel this way. But then I thought, well, if this Sony deal is about to be up, what's going to happen here with Pascal leaving? What's going to happen here? And will the MCU really make another studio's property 
their main leader of their of their Avengers franchise. And so that puts me in a number of places. Like, I, I imagine a, a new deal hopefully will be struck. But if not, they've got to explore some kind of situation where maybe something happens in Spider-Man Far From Home that zaps Spider-Man out of the current multiverse or universe into another multiverse. And so it requires a new Spider-Man to step up, and that could be Miles Morales. So there's all kinds of things that can happen here, in my opinion. Uh, but I would, I, I think we need to see a more solid deal from Sony and Marvel for Spider-Man and Tom Holland to be the person who takes over and leads the Avengers. I uh, I have no idea. Yeah. I have zero idea uh, because I don't know what that deal is. You know, what yeah. is, like, is he allowed to be in their Sony films? Like, because remember there was that talk of him being in Venom. Right. And nothing as ever Peter came Peter Parker, yeah, not as Spider-Man. Right, and nothing came of that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that was just fan speculation. He was supposedly on set for a couple of days. Yeah, supposedly. so I don't know. I mean... I, I don't. It, it, that was the one thing at the end of Endgame, which I really thought we were going to get a clear sense of what the new Avengers team would be, and mm -hmm. we didn't get anything, mm -hmm. nothing. So, you know, Falcon and Winter Soldier, they're going to be off on their on their show. So that's not me, making him there. Yeah. Um, Black Panther seemed to be sticking to Wakanda. Captain Marvel, yeah. we really didn't. She's off in the universe. Yeah. yeah and, so and, and I, I don't. says that Thor's off world, and right, Captain Marvel's yeah. far away. So maybe he is. I mean, I don't think he's got the experience for it. Right. I, I don't know. I have no idea what's going to happen with that. Well, and does if they open the door, Mike, yeah. would you want to see Venom in the MCU? Does that even work? Could, would it mean Feige could redo it and, and do some stuff with I it? I think it would have to be Tom Hardy, and he'd be borrowed like Tom Holland was borrowed and Spider-Man was well, borrowed. Would it be possible if we open the door to multiverses? That means Sony mm -hmm. has a part of the multiverse on their side that, with all the Spider-Man like characters. Yeah. In their little world. Yeah. Silver and black possibly coming down the road and what have you. Ah. Uh, I have no idea. I, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, you would, I would hope that, you know, two months from now we'll be able to have this conversation and go, okay, I got a clear sense of it. Right. But that could be all smoke and mirrors. Right, right. Hence Mysterio. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, it's a cool thing to... Th I don't know if I... Okay, let's say this. Yeah. I, for an opinion, I don't know if I would want to see Tom Holland Peter Parker lead this new group. Okay. I, I just don't... He always seems out of his element, and I love that about him. Right. And that's, I think, lends Peter it. Peter usually is. Yeah, that lends it to it, who he mm -hmm. is. I, I need a little stronger uh, figurehead, I should say. Do you think Strange should lead? Who should lead? Strange always seems like the guy's like, I know what's going on, but I don't want to help. I don't want to do anything. <laughs> he's the brand yeah. of, the, of the... I remember it was, God, brand it, was, it was Civil War in the comics. He was like, Wong was like, Doctor <laughs> Strange is not here. He's off world meditating on the events of what's going on. <laughs> okay. All right. We see how that goes. Okay, pal. So I think he, everything times gets tough and he just is like... I can't handle it. I got to go meditate I know, about but it. I can't because it'll affect... I'd like to tell you, but I can't. Like I said, it's just this one thing. It's this one, one thing where I live and you die. Yeah, Sorry! Sorry. I don't want to change events because I don't want to die. <laughs> we'll uh, see. We'll see what happens. I don't but know. there's certainly a lot of worlds are opening up, and we'll see what the deal is coming down the pike uh, with or Sony and Marvel. Yeah, is Mysterio just blowing smoke up everyone's butts? That's what a lot of he people knows what happens, and they talk mm -hmm. about this, and he was probably seen now, and everyone's just like, I can really milk this. Yeah, I can. there's a lot of global people out there, and a lot of people are saying, or I'm seeing online rather that the that this might not even be the actual Nick Fury because. This Nick Fury seems angrier. He seems harder, and so swearing it, to Peter Parker. He's yeah, swearing. swearing to Peter Parker. And some people are saying, "Oh, this is the ultimate uh, Nick Fury." And you I'm know, like, "Well, maybe, but it could be Mysterio creating this whole world for Spider-Man and deluding him that this is all happening when, in fact, it hasn't." And people are saying, also, I didn't know this, but they're saying the Chameleons in this movie. Oh, and they're saying that's who Nick Fury is. Oh, wow. And I didn't know this. Okay. I, I didn't. I, I don't know. I don't know where this is coming from. Okay. We'll well, they, got, they got their theories. Yeah. Just we, like Tom Holland was in all. Venom. It's a yeah. Theory. We're supposed to be in Venom. We'll see what happens. That's right. <laughs> all right. Let's get to our last question. It's from email, and it's Kay Stoudemire. He writes, Hi, Clotter Gang. With DC doing these one-off movies, do you think they will do any movies adapted from graphic novels like Mark Wade and Alex Ross's Kingdom Come, Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns, or Alan Moore's Batman the Killing Joke? Kalinowski. Mmm. Right to the, right to the uh, lion's den here with this one. <laughs> Mr. DC. Oh. <sighs> You know, I, I I think the Joker will answer that question. Mm -hmm. To see what this is, I'm very excited for this. I'm not I w I'm not a Joker fan at all. Yeah, I don't I know. really you, care for the you, character. You're not a big fan of Joker. Uh, but that trailer and everything I've seen so far, I was like, oh, this is interesting. I don't know. Uh, we talked about the audiences are smart nowadays. I mm. don't think they need to have a connective universe and like, well, his Joker's not Leto's Joker, and what's going on? I think they just want a great movie. Right. Um, I wish they would. I wish 
there was talk a while about where, where they were going to do these Elseworlds films, mm -hmm. and, and we, we the, the DC dark label for their comics, and they thought, well, maybe this is just going to be the films that they can do that's not part of this little DCEU, and maybe we can get a kingdom come. Right. I don't want that, because look at Endgame. Mm -hmm. You know what we got? Kingdom Come is you. You love Kingdom Come. Yeah, I love it. It's one it, of my top three. It, it's it. You love it because of you know the history. Mm -hmm. You know the oh, Superman, the Batman. You know the Wonder Woman. You Great know points. so when all these older characters come, that scene where at the planet uh, Krypton at the end, and mm -hmm. they're all you know they're pregnant, and we want you to be the Godfather. It has so much weight because you know the characters, mm -hmm. and so many people are upset about BVS because it jumped twenty years, and you didn't get the history of all that. Right. So I don't know, but like like Batman, you know. Um, uh, so what is oh god what's the one where he's the, the Jekyll and Hyde not Jekyll and Hyde the oh uh, Gotham by Gaslight yes the, yeah it makes a great animated film and it I think did. that's it was an what they're doing animated film. you know maybe the animated stuff it's cheaper right uh, I don't voice know, talent isn't going to take as much right. as uh, Superman Red Sun would be talent. so good but it's right. like you've got to build a whole world and and have a budget for it and it's a one-off. Yeah, and I rarely buy superhero animated films. Obviously, I made an uh, exception for Into the Spider-Verse, but <clears throat> Dark Knight Returns, both one and two, I bought those on Blu-ray because they're incredible. Yeah. I, I did not anticipate that an animated version of Dark Knight Returns would work, and it completely works. Yes, would I have replaced Peter Weller with Conroy? Possibly. But, yeah. uh, but th overall, the film completely works, grabs the mood and the atmosphere and the vibe of the original comic, the graphic novel that it's based on, so that may be the route they go. Spider-Verse right. Spider may accidentally open the door, not only to multiverses, but to the possibility of studios stepping up their animation game with I... superhero heroes, and we may see a Kingdom Come or a uh, or a Killing Joke, uh, well, not a Killing Joke, but a Dark Knight Returns that is, or I mean, sorry, a Kingdom Come, rather, that has higher-end talent voicing it and uh, bringing it to life in an animated way that's uh, revolutionary. Let me ask you, and, and also for you guys out there, yeah. but see, so when you say you want these uh, Killing Joke, uh, Dark Knight Returns, why do you want those? Like, it, it's mm. because they were done so well in the comic book. Yeah. So you just want a little translation. And I, I was one of the first people when I heard Civil War, I was so excited for it. But then I was like, well, they, they can't do Civil War, right? Because there's so much. The comics. But then you right. watch it and you're just like, it was so good because it was in their world. And right. they took what fit to there. So for me to just do a literal translation of a comic book that was done so well, I think that's the sweet spot of these animated mm -hmm, films. Mm -hmm. it, it's not a, a live action, but like killing, a lot of people had a problem with Killing Joke because it was so, so spot on, spot authentic, on the book, authentic to the but book. then they hated the first 15 minutes right. because they did And I, I liked the first 15 minutes because okay. we hadn't seen anything like that. Okay. Sure, I don't know if I would have agreed with it, with what they did, but right. it was something we hadn't seen. Mm -hmm. what, what do you thought? What are your thoughts on I, that? I didn't like the first 15 minutes myself. I thought it was trying to correct something, uh, trying to course correct something that should have just stood on its own. I got the intention. Right. I totally respected the intention. People were upset of how Barbara Gordon is treated in The Killing Joke, but it's the Joker. It's the Joker. <laughs> That's what he's supposed to do <laughs> is to attack and destroy and maim and cripple people because that's his pursuit. Jim, no one was crying for Jim Gordon was an old man stripped naked and had no, uh, y y little midgets dance, or I'm sorry, little people dancing around him in I weird mean, costumes. Nobody cried for Jim Gordon, and he was an elderly man I, getting abused in this way. I mean, so these things are, yeah, and, and possibly, yeah, yeah, yeah that, possibly yeah. sexually. So these are these things that are dancing around a killing joke that makes it a harder. So I didn't need the 15 minutes. I thought it was useless because once the film actually starts with that panel in the rain in the card yeah. at Arkham, that's when the animated... Uh, film takes off and is great but until then it's i just don't like it that's the thing that i worry about with kingdom come kingdom come has a lot of difficult topics as well would they really and i think mike you make a great point would they be able to capture it effectively when you don't have the history of the comics right. to go on behind it i think I mean, that's really because yeah, you've thing. got all the, the 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 prodigy like nightwing and starfire's daughter right. and all, all this stuff and you're just like well who are these people they just become random people that are, there's no uh, way to gravitas to the reason they're mm -hmm. there and you need that you need the gen it's like the generations in that movie right you know multiple green lanterns yeah. from different Right. Eras. It's yeah, like, yeah. I think yeah. I think a Kingdom Come, give us 20 years of DC films, mm -hmm. and then do a Kingdom Come. Do you think in your future, and we should wrap this up here, do you think in the future, if DC gets everything right, do you see 10 years from now a possibility of Crisis on Infinite Earths being something that is done that rivals Avengers Endgame? <sighs> you put me on the spot here, man. <laughs> That's what um, Mailbag is, You know, it, it has been a bumpy road. I, I yeah. look at the... the the most recent films, and I wish Justice League was not, I wish it was One Woman, Aquaman, Shazam. I wish those three hit in a row <laughs> because it was it would have been three successes in a row. Mm -hmm. um, 
I think they're finding their footing now. Yeah. And I think, I think they realize we cannot do Marvel. We cannot do X, Y, and Z builds to a super movie. Right. You know, it, it, in a phase. It's just their own films. They'll find what works. I could see a crisis. I mean... Just their version of yeah, it. Yeah, their version of right. it. I absolutely... Because I look at the TV world, mm -hmm. and if they oh, can yeah. find a way to loop all that in together... People love Grant Gustin. They love him as the Flash. Mm -hmm. And it, the potential's there to bring that world onto the, those universes together. Yeah, especially now with Ezra, yeah. which seems pretty much is out. And I'm, I'm, on, I'm on that camp. Yeah, I'm I on that camp. I, I think him writing that script is just an illusion to get him out I, and PR stuff. On that one. Yeah, and I think they're definitely going to get a new Flash in there, and it might be Gustin, because the, the chorus has not they, stopped they to love, have him jump they, over. They beat that drum. Yeah, they yeah, love him. Loudly enough for DC to hear. <laughs> all right, well, there you go. That's this episode of Collider Mailbag on this lovely Saturday morning. I really appreciate you all taking the time to watch us and listen to us go on and on about superhero stuff and film stuff. I want to thank uh, Mike Kalinowski for stopping thank you, by. Thank you very much for having me. It's Love awesome, it. man. You're, anytime, you're anytime. a new time, new new uh, guest on Mailbag. We'll definitely have you back. Where can people find you in the meantime and uh, all you're doing? I'm at social media at Mike Kalinowski. Okay. Pretty straightforward. That's it. And you're on DC Movie News? DC Movie News, yes. Uh, it is Fridays at 1 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. There you Myself, go. Myself, Ms. Roxy Stryer, Adam Gertler, yeah. Daniel Laquasto. Talk, if you want to hear me rant more about DC, that's the place to be. <laughs> Absolutely. And the newly promoted John Quasto. Congratulations oh to him yes. for getting the NXT job. Super jealous of him, but also very happy for him. You can follow me at The Roke Says on Twitter and on Instagram. And don't forget, you can send your questions. When you send your questions in, we put the call outs on social media, on Twitter and Instagram. Put that hashtag, Collider Mailbag, makes it easier for me to find you. Remember to email us, too, if you don't like social media. Mailbag at Collider.com. Pour through all those questions and pick them out for the show. All right, have yourselves a great Saturday, and we'll be back tomorrow with another episode of Collider Mailbag with the Beast, Ooh. William Bibiani. Oh, my. Growl, growl. <laughs> <laughs>